everyone. Let's all stand. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. It's your words, it's your love, how glorious, how glorious are you, Lord? It's your power, it's your power, it was your cross that saved me and rescued me.
traded my everybody. I said praise the Lord everybody. Amen. As we continue to praise the Lord in this place here this morning. Amen. Um, we're going to dismiss the children at this time. Amen. Jesus 
take me as you find me All my fears and failures some worship here in a few minutes prepare our hearts for the word um, 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 real quick if I can if I can have the ushers as we continue um, our worship and our giving here um, and then we're gonna and then we're gonna press into some worship and then we're gonna get in the word and then we're gonna partake of communion and then we're gonna go home and see Tim Tebow win today hey if you're saved and you're born again we need to be praying for that young man, amen? Because he's representing Jesus without compromise, amen? He's on our side. 
I'm having fun, but at the same time, I'm being very serious. Amen. We need to lift him up in prayer because he is representing Jesus. When they were interviewing him, this kid is unbelievable. He continues to just, I mean, leave people speechless. He goes, football is not my number one priority. It's just a platform that God has given me. And then he talked about missionary work in the Philippines and the kids. Amen. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to worship in our giving. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to worship some more to prepare our hearts for the word. Then we're going to take communion and, and thanksgiving of what Jesus has ha, did for us uh, on the cross. And, and then we're going to go home and say, see Tim Tebow win. Amen. amen. Can I get a good amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you need an offering envelope, please raise your hand and we'll get one out to you as quickly as possible. There should be one in the seat pocket in front of you. Again, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your trust. And who is here? Well, let's do this. Praise God. Amen. Let's take the offering. Uh, Isaac, will you bless the offering, please? Amen. Are you excited to give? Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, into your house, Lord, that we may be able to bless you for all the blessings that you have given us, Lord. Whatever we are pouring out from our finances into your blessings, Lord, use it for your kingdom glory. Bless each and every one over here, Lord, who is able to and who is unable to give this day, Lord. And in the days to come, Lord, bless each and every one that they, everybody should be able to pour into your blessings, Lord, so that many souls may be saved for your kingdom glory, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Isaac, thank you so much. You guys go ahead and serve the people at this time. And, um, and I gotta, I'm going to be, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be, you know, you know I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say it. I can't believe I'm saying this publicly, but, but just so you know my heart, when the Chicago Bears were playing the Denver Broncos, and I know, I know, and, and uh, now some of my Chicagoans, amen, you're, you're going you're gonna to think, what, what's happened to Pastor? We need to pray for him. Something's wrong. I'm telling you, during the regular season, they were in Denver, and, I, and I, my sister was, had just briefly went back to Denver. Stacy, God bless you. She's back there right now in Grand Junction. I, mean, I should say Grand Junction. Amen. Wave to my sister. Okay. <laughs> Uh, 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 and, 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 and towards the end of the game, because it wasn't being um, um, shown here, I was calling. I go, what's the score? What's going on? You know, Chicago is, you know, and it was the fourth quarter, and they were playing the Denver Broncos. But when it got closer and closer, and Denver was making their comeback against Chicago at the end, I got to tell you something. I mean, bec now this is because the kingdom kicked in. No, no, I, you see, I just jumped out of, you know, my personal thing, and I am a diehard Chicago fan. Everyone knows that. But I got to tell you, Knowing Tim Tebow and who he's representing and how many lives he's impacting with his testimony for the first time ever. No, no, really, I, I can say that ever. I was cheering against, I, I was cheering against, I was, I, I was cheering against, against the Chicago Bears. I was hoping for Denver to come back because of the glory that God was going to get, and they did. And God's name was glorified. Now, hopefully that's the last time they play each other because that, that was just, that was too much. That was way too much for me to go through. The things I go through, amen, the trials, the tribulations, the fires, amen. Woo! Uh, who's here real quick for the first time in this place? Let me see your hand if you're here for the very first time. I see a couple of hands here. I see a couple of hands. God bless you. I see a few hands over here. Okay, okay. Young man's not here. His wife's here. Uh, Julia, um, uh, Chris Ward um, had these um, um, these little, um, 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 it's a three-month little calendar. It was from his text messages that he printed out. They're like for three months. And actually, it's, it's from January 1st to March 31st. So we're, we're a few days into this. And there's two more left. And I'm, and I'm purchasing the last two. And I want to bless somebody. So, Julia, I'm going to get you guys that money, you know, back into this, okay? These are the last two. Um, um, and he's going to come up with another three months, I believe, after March 31st. Many of you already have this in your hand. And it's just like a daily devotional. And, um, and God's using him in a very powerful way. And, 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 and I believe in, in this young man. He's preached behind this pulpit uh, multiple times. So this will bless you, okay? So these are the last two. And I want to bless somebody here Here's for, for the first time. Let me see the hands again. Who's here for the first time? I saw, okay, I, I see two people right here, okay? Uh, let me... The young man right there with the glasses, and then and then and, and and then the young woman there. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. And who now? Real quick. Now, 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 
There you go. God bless you. And we do have also for every first-time visitor, we have something in the back of the bookstore. If you would take the time, please, to fill out the card and let us know how you find out about the church. Any prayer requests, if you're looking for a church home, we will be faithful to follow up and help you in that area. Amen. So that's in the bookstore. Also, real quick, now who, now, 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 and your name, Sister Praise? Linda. And how did you find out about the church, Linda? All right, praise us. So it's your first time here. Well, it's good to have you. Amen. And my brother over here. And your name? Craig? Greg. Praise the Lord. And how did you find out about the church? Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, it's good to have you. Amen. Also, real quick, real quick, we got two tickets. Next Sunday, after service, we're going to a basketball game. Amen. Phoenix College, um, it's the Arizona Scorpions, the ABA, amen, and um, the coach will be here on Sunday morning, this coming up Sunday morning, um, for a couple minutes, he's going to talk about what they do as a team and into the community and so forth and so on, he's going to try to have one of the players, one of the star prayer players to be here with him, and then they have a game at, is it 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Uh, um, 2 o'clock at Phoenix College. We have flyers in the back to let you know as far as um, um, many of you already have the tickets. We had purchased a whole bunch of tickets. These are the last two. They're going to be here on Sunday, and they'll have a table so you can purchase some more tickets to come and join. We're turning this into like a family day at the church. Bring the children out. Amen. And uh, I've been given the opportunity by by the grace of God, to be the 13th man. So I, I, I'm going to have a chance to be with, the, with, the, with the, the, the players and pray for them before the, serv before the service, before their game. Amen. And, and, and then and then um, and be able to hang out at the uh, on the bench, Amen. Praise the Lord. So and just kind of say, "Come on, you know," or, or say, "Keep on doing what you're doing," or "You get back over here." You get back. You know, I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. I'm not gonna be cool. I'm just. So it's called the Thirteenth Man. So by the grace of God, we've been given this opportunity. The coach will be here next week. He's gonna share, like I said, his heart. They do a lot in the community. He's saved. He's a Christian. He's got a a, a biblical background. Amen. And um, it's just going to be a fun day, praise the Lord. So make plans to join us. There will be tickets. We've got discounted tickets, and they'll be here selling some more of those tickets that morning in our service before and after. I got two tickets. Who would be interested? Hand went up right there first. There we go. Praise God. God bless you. Amen. And we'll have, and we'll have more tickets, and we'll have more tickets. And we'll have more tickets. Um, like I said, they'll be here next week um, with tickets available. It'll just be a good time of fellowship also. Amen. Um, and, and if there's families in this room and they have children and your heart is to bring them to, to the game and, um, and, um, and, 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 and you're just coming up short for whatever reason, please come and see me or somebody in leadership and we're going to um, – we'll figure it out, okay? But if that – you know, but please, you know, make sure it's – you know, that you know, you, you know what I'm saying. Amen. So if that's, and you're just coming up short and it's not in the budget and you really would like to go and have the kids there and be part of that fellowship, we'll find a way to make it happen. Amen? Amen. Well, what are the tickets right now? Anyway, they're like, I think it's $6. Amen? So they'll be, like I said, they'll be selling. He'll be here with his table and so forth and so on. And um, I guess Cedric Sabalos is, what, now is he like, he's like a coach there or is that like how? Okay, Cedric Sabalos, they used to work for the, they used to play for the Phoenix Suns and was an all-star. He's the owner of the team. How many people know who Cedric Sabalos is? Amen. Okay. So, so we actually, that you were saying that maybe he might even show up next time, but we're not sure. Maybe. So it's like, but you never know in this place. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Are you ready to worship the Lord? Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Amen.
your hands up. I worship you. 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 Jesus. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Oh God. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Jesus. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Come on, just close your eyes right now. Lift your hands up, just worship him. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. That's what we were created for. To worship you, God. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you.
Father in heaven, thank you for your son. Jesus, thank you for the cross. Holy Spirit, thank you. Comforter, we thank you. Have your way in this place. Your will to be done, your name to be glorified. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your precious blood that you shed on the cross, Jesus, for us. Thank you. Oh, we are a thankful people here this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy of all the glory and all the honor. He is worthy, he is worthy, he is worthy, he is worthy, he is worthy. Oh, hallelujah! Lift up your hands, lift up your hands. they that hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled Spirit, God, pour out your spirit. 
spirit on all flesh, on all flesh. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, Jesus, we hunger, God. For you. We need you, Lord. We need you, God. We need your love. We need your spirit. We need more of you, God. We need more of you, Lord. More of your love, God. More of your power, Lord. More of your love, Lord. More of your power, God. More of you, God. More of you, Lord. More of you, God. Oh, we God. We need you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Have mercy, God. Pour out your spirit on us, Lord. Cleanse our hearts, Lord. Cleanse our hearts, Lord. Renew our minds, God. Renew our minds, Lord. Hallelujah. Pour out a fresh anointing, God. A fresh anointing, God. We hunger, God. We hunger for you, God. More of you, Lord. More of you, Jesus. Oh, more of you, Spirit. More of your Spirit, God. More of your Spirit, God. More, God. Hallelujah. your strength, God. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I need your joy, God. I need your joy. I need more of your joy, Lord. Oh, God, pour out your spirit, God. Pour out your spirit, God. Lord, pour out your spirit, God. Hallelujah, Lord. You Lord, we exalt your name. We exalt your name, Jesus. No other name, no other name, Jesus. There is power in that name, there is healing in that name. Whatever your need is today, He has the power. He has the power. Hallelujah, Lord. You're worthy, God. We exalt your name. Hallelujah. You're worthy, God. We love you, Jesus. We need you. Worshiping the Lord here, Pastor Ryan. The Lord showed Pastor Ryan something about the church, and I want him to just to speak it to encourage us of what God is doing in our midst. God showed me a cross, the biggest cross I ever seen above this church, and it was gold, and the light emanating from it was going across this valley in strings like Christmas lights. And every string that went down every street, every house's light came on. And it emanated, and it was coming down and touching each one. House by house by house. That light's coming through right now from the saints' praise and worship. The praise and altar bowls right now are being filled. They're being with measuring rods. The angel's coming down, measuring our praise and worship. And he said, the bowl's getting full. The cross is coming. And it's coming right here. We're going to be worthy. We're going to be worthy. Thank you, God. Every hand lifted up to start thanking Lord. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Thank you for what you're doing in our midst. We thank you, Lord God. For the light that's going on in each house, each family, household salvations. Not just in this neighborhood, but throughout the city and, and the state. And Lord, we thank you right now. We believe, Lord God, that as we are faithful and we do our part and we are faithful to the assignment in this place that it's going to be rivers of, and rivers to go out to impact and to infect infect people with your presence with the message of hope that there is hope there is an answer and his name is Jesus so we thank you for the harvest thank you for the increased harvest thank you for the increased harvest 
Thank you for the increased harvest in 2012. Thank you for the breakthroughs. Thank you for the breakouts. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for answering prayer. Thank you once again for household salvations. Household salvations. That light is going in those dark places. Your light, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for your presence, for this day this opportunity once again to gather together and to be able to lift up your glorious and awesome. Thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to serve you, Lord, to be your ambassadors, to represent you, and to reach others for your glory. We believe that there's an acceleration and an increase of favor and grace and an and, 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 and increase in provision to go forth, to reach the hurting, the afflicted, the addicted, the lost, for your glory. We thank you that this year we're going to see the greatest harvest of souls we've ever seen before. In Jesus' name. And we give you all the glory and all the honor for the upcoming harvest that's coming in. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, before you're seated in the presence of the Lord, just look at your neighbor and just say these words, don't do it. And you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The the We're going to be in Genesis chapter 39 this morning. Genesis chapter 39, starting in verse 1. Um, just real quick, I just want to also um, 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 remind everybody, next Saturday morning we do have outreach. Um, Saturday morning, we'll gather here at 9.30. I, I got to go back. That was, that was, I only throw like five amens or something. After all that, after what God is showing us about this church and what God's doing and going and lights going into homes, five amens? This is why we've gathered here. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna gather in fellowship and coffee and donuts and good fellowship in the morning. And then we're going to head on out into the neighborhood and invite people to church, love on our community this Saturday morning starting at 930. Uh, uh, um, and, then also, and, and, then, and then Saturday night, I have a friend of mine that's, um, that's, that's going to be here um, on Saturday night that's going to be ministering behind this pulpit, Pastor Eddie Paul Morris. And I don't know if you know Pastor Eddie Paul. He's actually on um, um, AZTV after our program on Sunday nights at 930. He comes on at 10, Deer Valley Worship Center. Um, I've known him um, pretty much since I, um, 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 right after I got saved. We um, um, was, part, was actually connected and um, started with us also in the beginning stages back in the living room days at our house when the ministry was birthed. So we've known him for a long time, a, a, a real close friend of ours, and he will be here on Saturday night ministering the Word of God, and he's going to, I believe he's going to talk about, well, I don't want, I, he's, he's just a very transparent guy, and he's, he, he dealt with depression and some other things, and God really has brought a breakthrough and liberty in his life, and, and we're not talking about depression before he was saved, we're talking depression after he was saved and dealing with that, you know, and just, um, so uh, I believe he's really going, he's got a word for us, now I think he's going to touch on that. So uh, 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 I really believe it's going to be a huge, very encouraging night. Amen. And he's going to talk about the process and, um, you know, some of the things he's been through and, and how God has brought him to where, from where he was and where he's at and now, you know, leading a church and God using him in a very, very powerful way. Praise the Lord. So next Saturday night, 7 o'clock, I would encourage you, if, especially if you're not able to make it on Saturdays, or, but, you're, but you can, this coming up Saturday, I, I would encourage you um, to be here. I would encourage you to be here next Saturday. So, so it'll be, um, uh, it's going to be a great, great day for the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Um, Genesis chapter 39, starting in verse 1. 
Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. So prior to this, in chapter 37, the Bible lets us know that Joseph um, 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 was, um, um, was um, um, approaching his brothers, and as he was approaching his brothers, his brothers turned around and said, oh, here comes that dreamer, and, and, um, and, and they conspired to kill him. Um, but thank God for Reuben, because Reuben stepped in and said, listen, let's not kill him. Let's, you know, let's not do such a thing, but let's just throw him in a pit. And, um, and they end up throwing him in a pit, and then they see some Ishmaelites coming, and they sold him, they sell Joseph into um, slavery to these Ishmaelites. So the Ishmaelites then uh, um, connect with Potiphar, and Potiphar now, we pick up the story, and here's Joseph now, uh, 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 a Hebrew, uh, now uh, a slave that has lost his liberty liberty and has been in, in, in the Egyptian house and uh, we pick up the story now in verse 2 the Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man and he was in the house of his master the Egyptian and his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand so Joseph found favor in his sight and served him then he made him overseer of his house look at something wow he made him overseer of his house, and all that he had, he put under his authority. Not some of the things that he had, but the now this Egyptian Potiphar, this man uh, of authority, this man of title, here he turns everything over and, and puts complete trust to Joseph, who was not even a citizen of Egypt. He's a Hebrew that has been bought um, as a slave and now has all authority over Potiphar's house and finances and dealings. So verse 5, so it was from that, from, from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. So the house was blessed because of who? Joseph. Not because of Potiphar, not because of anybody else in the house, not because Potiphar was wise in, as far as in, a, a wise businessman or, or, no, no. The reason why the house was blessed was because of Joseph. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, all that he had in Joseph's hand, all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance, and it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph, and she said, lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, look, my master does not know what is with me in the house, and he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And sin against God. So it was as she spoke to Joseph day by day that he did not heed her to lie with her or to be with her. Look at your neighbor and say, don't do it. And we're, like I said last night, where you think we're going, we're not going. Find one more person and say, don't do it. But that's not where we're going. <laughs> but it happened about this time when Joseph went into the house to do his work, and none of the men of the house was inside, that she caught him by his garment, saying, lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. And so it was when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside that she called to the men of her house and spoke to them saying, See, he has brought it. He has brought into us a Hebrew to mock us. He came into me to lie with me and I cried out with a loud voice. Uh, now I got to, because we're going to come back. I want, I, want to make, I want you to catch this. In verse 14, she said, I cried out with a loud voice. 
I cried out with a loud voice. We're going to come back to that. And it happened when he heard that I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled and went outside. So she kept his garment with her until his master came home. Then she spoke to him with works, words like these, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you brought to us came in to me to mock me. So it happened as I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled outside. So it was... When his master heard the words which his wife spoke to him, saying, your servant did to me after this manner, that his anger was aroused. Then Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined, and he was there in the prison. He was there in the prison. He was there in the prison. Now, Potiphar responds to the words of his wife and immediately throws Joseph in prison. Now, while Joseph was in Potiphar's house, the house was blessed. Everything um, increased. Everything multiplied everything moved forward everything there was favor there was increase there was provision there was in because of joseph the bible lets us know that potiphar turned everything over to joseph now how many people realize here this morning that um this did not happen the first day that joseph showed up or was bought by potiphar as his slave that did not happen the first week that did not happen the first month for for Potiphar to entrust Joseph to that level, that happened over some time. In other words, there was some character, there was some integrity that, that, that Potiphar saw in Joseph. He, he saw that Joseph was a man of conviction. He saw that Joseph over some time, not just in a couple weeks, but over some time. So you, you can't just read the Bible, you need to read the Bible. So when you look at the text, the Bible says that he turned everything over and entrusted everything over to Joseph. Now that doesn't happen overnight. So there was some consistency for for. for for Potiphar to be able to do something like this, to be able to leave the house and turn everything over to Joseph to handle, there was come, there was trust. Uh, he knew that, that, that Joseph was a man of conviction. He knew that Joseph was a man that feared God without a doubt. And now we see his wife telling him that this is what Joseph did. And he immediately assumed that what she said was the truth. And because he assumed and believed something that wasn't even accurate, the person that was bringing in the blessing now has departed the house because Potiphar assumed in reality what he needed to do especially with I'm just as I'm reading the story here when you look at the track record you know that this uh, you would think you would think you would think Potiphar would stop and say wait a second this doesn't sound like Joseph I've had this guy in my house for a long time and and he's been faithful everything that happens everything that's been touched here has been blessed this, this, doesn't, this, is, this doesn't sound like his character. This doesn't sound like his integrity. This isn't, I've been around this man for some time, and, and, and this, doesn't, this doesn't sound right. Uh, uh, you would think before he assumed that, that what she said, even though it was his wife, but at the same time, he should have just stopped for a moment, looked back, and said, wait a second, this does not line up. This, is not, this, is not, this does not line up to where I made a decision to turn everything over because I trusted this person because of this person's conviction, character, integrity, fear of God. This, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't, the fruit does 
not, does not, the, the fruit that this man has and has had in his life, it doesn't, this doesn't, it doesn't add up here. Something, uh, wait, wait, before I make a decision, before I, I jump to uh, uh, a decision here, so th- th- let me not assume that what's being said is the truth. Let me, let me make sure that, that I investigate this. Let, let, let me, let me, you know what, let's go get the videotape uh, uh, of the security, or, or better yet, let me go interview my, 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 my other, uh, my security guards within the house and get the whole story before I, I make a decision. Because in reality, if he would have proceeded in that direction and not assumed what was being said as truth, because we know it wasn't truth, he still would have had the blessing in his house. Now the blessing has left his house because he assumed, and the Bible says that Potiphar's wife said that she screamed. Where's it at over here? And it was when I saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside that she called to the men of her house and spoke to them, saying, See, he has brought into us a Hebrew to mock us. He came into me to lie with me, and I, verse 14, and I cried out with a loud voice. Wait a second. I cried out. With, so she went out and got a hold of some people, and then she says, I cried out. If she cried out in the midst of that situation, they would have heard the cry and they would have shown up before she tried to get a hold of them. So if Potiphar would have done his homework and followed up, he would have found out after some investigation that what was being said was not accurate would have responded in a different way and still had the blessing in his house. But because he assumed it led to losing his blessing because Joseph was the reason why the house and the business and everything that was connected to Potiphar was blessed. He assumed now look at somebody say, don't do it. Don't do what? Don't do what? What do you mean? Don't do what? Don't do what? Don't do what? Don't assume. Don't assume. Don't assume. Look at five, seven, five people and say, don't assume. Don't assume. Don't assume. Don't assume. Don't assume. To accept as a fact something not proved to supposed to be true. Assume. Don't assume. To accept as a fact something not proved. To accept as a fact something that has not been proved to be supposed to be true. Or you think it's true, but it's not been proved, so it's not truth, but it's assumed to be truth. And many times, nine out of ten times, when we assume, it's not truth. Or you're getting bits and pieces of it. Can I get a good amen? Amen. And because Potiphar assumed what she said was accurate, and you would think, well, he, you know, it's his wife. But, you know, why wouldn't? Because Joseph had a record. And I'm not talking a bad record. I'm talking about a godly record in his house because he would have never turned everything over to him. So in the moment he assumed, instead of stepping back and using some wisdom and investigating and discerning the matter, and if he would have done his homework, he would have found out, wait a second, there was no crying, there was no shouting. My security people, the surveillance tape, I don't see anything happening here. I don't see nothing here. All I see is Joseph running. (laughs) Something's not adding up. Something's not adding up. Something's not adding up. And he still would have had the blessing in his house. But because he assumed, he lost the blessing in his house. A photographer, I shared this story. A photographer, a photographer was given the opportunity to, to, to take pictures of a fire that was, that was taking place over a city. And, um, and, and, and his boss is like, hey, I need you to go take some pictures of this fire. And there's a plane waiting for you at the airport to take you up to take these pictures of the fire. So the photographer, you know, um, you know his boss, you know, that's, what, you know, that's his job, goes to the airport. And there's a man that's standing by the plane. And, 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 and when the photographer shows up with the man standing by this one plane, and this is the private 
private area. Amen. This is not the not not the commercial airlines. So when he shows up, he sees he sees this man standing by the plane, and he he goes up to the man, and, and he goes, "Are you ready to go?" And they, they both get on the plane, and they take off. And then after some time, the photographer says, "Well, well you know, where's the where's the fire?" And he's like, "What do you mean, where's the fire?" He's like, "Well, well, well I'm here to take pictures of the fire." And and, and then the, and then the the, the 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 guy the pilot looks at the photographer and, and says, "Wait a second, I thought you were my flight instructor." <laughs> No, I'm here to take pictures of the fire. Well, I'm, I thought you were my flight. So both assumed, and they assumed wrong. And now you got a novice pilot that knows enough to get off the, the ground. But I don't know how far his training's gotten him to where I don't know about his landing. And then you got a photographer that assumed that was his pilot, because both did not take the time to ask. Also, I shared this example last night also. And when we assume, the majority of the times, it does not end up good. It does not end up good. It does not end up good. Potiphar lost a blessing because he responded and assumed thinking something was true when it wasn't true. And in the church today, we assume way too much. And because we assume and then immediately will listen or hear something, we start to paint a picture in our mind. And eventually that picture immediately, if we're not careful to catch it, because we, as humans, we have a tendency to do these things. And if we don't keep our guard up, amen, and do our homework, and sometimes it's not even doing our homework. It's just about walking away from that thing, amen, because sometimes it's got nothing. You know what? That's God's business the majority of the time, amen. You know, sometimes all God is saying is like, I just gave you this opportunity just to pray for this person, you know, in, in this situation. And we get ourselves into situations and relationships are broken and church divisions happen and stuff happens and blessings are lost and victories are lost and, and, and breakthroughs are lost and increases lost because we assume. And the majority of the time, the thing that we assume, we might have pieces of truth there, but, the, but, the, but it's not complete truth. And sometimes it's not just, it's just way off, period. Amen. For example, when you go on the YouTube, I, I shared this and we we're talking with Eric earlier again when you go on youtube and you get a hold of a pastor i mean it's crazy godly pastors that have impacted the kingdom of god around the world i'm talking healthy fruit i'm talking souls i'm talking when you go to their med you, you and you know their ministry and you've investigated and you've been part of it and and a few ministries that we're connected to and one is world harvest church pastor rod parsley that we're connected under the covering of the ministerial fellowship I mean, it's an amazing thing. You go to YouTube and you start to look at, 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 at his messages. And then all of a sudden, in the midst of the messages, you also see on YouTube, false prophet, false teacher, false this, false that. And you're thinking, what in the world? And, and if you go and, and, and look at that now, you don't know anything about Pastor Parsley. You, 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 you've heard a couple things, but you've never really taken the time to know his ministry, right? And you jump on that YouTube, and then you look at false teaching. Then what happens is what you're getting sometimes, these, these bozos, these these these. Straight from the pit of hell. We'll take 20 seconds of a message. The message is one hour long. And they'll take 20 seconds or a minute and give you that one minute and say, did you hear what he said? And it's taken out of. And it was another pastor that said, you know what? Because it was another one that was under attack all the time. And he goes, you know, I would really appreciate it before you form your opinion or make a conclusion. How about listening to the first 30 minutes of what I said leading into that one minute? And what happens is we, we, we form an opinion. We see something. We hear something. And immediately, if we're not careful, we form an opinion. We make a decision. And now... Someone that maybe God would have wanted to use to speak into your life a word in season. You have shut the door because you assumed somebody from YouTube that's a bozo said that about that person. And you made an assumption and now you've lost a blessing. Look at some say, don't do it. 
Yeah, find four more people. Don't do it. 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 When we do, we find ourselves on a plane with a novice pilot flying around the city, lost. In the spirits. Look at them and tell you, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And when we do, watch this now. When we do, when we do, when we do, when we assume, when we assume to accept as a fact something that is not proved, when we assume, it affects relationships and it affects the body of Christ. It affects relationships and it affects the, the, the body of Christ. We see here Potiphar had a good thing going with Joseph. He had a good thing going with Joseph. But because he assumed, he lost that good thing. And what he saw, what he assumed was not accurate. It was completely false. And he had a good thing going. And he lost that good thing as a byproduct. So relationship was severed. It was damaged because somebody assumed. And how many people realize in this room that one of the biggest things that the enemy's after within the church because he knows once we're saved, there's certain things that he had a hold on us. And in the first couple months or the first year or so, if it was drugs, if it was an addiction, if it was this, if it was that, depending on what it was, in the beginning, you know, I don't know, like when I first got saved, it was an amazing thing. When I first got saved, you know, the, the first couple months, you know, everything was free. <laughs> Stuff... <laughs> Stuff that cost now was free. Instead of calling people, people were calling me. <laughs> but did you get it? And if you didn't, just ask somebody. <laughs> There's enough in here to know what I just said. Amen. So, 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 but after a while, you know, the enemy lose, loses hold of that area in your life. So now he knows he can't get you from the outside anymore. So he starts to come from the inside, amen, with relationships. You know, this country, our greatest enemy in this country is not, is not outside of the country. It is not terrorism. It's not, no, no, it, that is not our greatest enemy. The greatest enemy is within the country. It's not people that are not American. It's the ones that are, and we're not able to come together. We are divided, and a house divided cannot stand. Someone say good amen. amen. That's the greatest battle we're battling. We can't come together. And the enemy knows this, and one of the areas, because where there's no unity, there's no power. Matthew 18, verse 19 says, again I say, to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that you ask, how many? Two. Not one, but two. Look at someone say, I need you. So don't assume. It will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Amos 3.3 3 says, can two walk together unless they are agreed? How can you be agree? How can you be in agreement if you're assuming? See, when we assume, that's what Potiphar did. Now the agreement and the blessing and the overflow now is not there anymore because he assumed something to be true that wasn't true. So now there's no agreement. There. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9, 10, 11, and 12. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a three-cord is not quickly broken. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Uh, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord. They were all with one accord. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, verse 2, and suddenly, verse 2, as a byproduct of being in one accord, then verse 2 opens up and suddenly hits the church. As a byproduct of being together. 
they burst us suddenly. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Shot, I want that. I want that. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. Suddenly, suddenly, verse 2 was a byproduct of verse 1. But when we assume, we lose and we miss our suddenlies. We miss our suddenlies. We miss the blessings of God. And we know after that took place, fire came, Peter preached, 3,000 people were saved, the church exploded. They went into the highways, the byways, and they started to take over for the glory of God as a byproduct of being unified. Amen. I'm here. I'm t one of the biggest, biggest enemies that, that, that attacks the church is when we assume. It's not even the devil. We always say it's the devil, the devil, the devil. The devil will take this, though, and use it against us. But it's not the devil to start it off with. It's not the devil. I, I said it's not the devil. There is another enemy that is loose in the house. I said there's another enemy that is loose in the house. Take your finger and point to yourself. There's an enemy loose, and it's not the devil all the time. And when we assume, we open up the door to allow the enemy to set up shop, to bring division, to separate, to divide, and break relationships. And there's relationships and things that have been damaged within the church because people have assumed or heard something that they thought was true. And now because they took that and did not take the time to, number one, do the research, number one, to take a step back and wait a second, that doesn't sound like brother so-and-so, that doesn't sound like sister and so-and-so. Wait a second, I've been coming to that church for three years, four years, and now they're saying this, wait a second, that does not line up to four years of coming to this church. The fruit that this church has, the fruit that this sister has, the fruit that this brother has, the fruit that this person, wait a second, this does not add up. This does not add up. So something's up here. Something's up here. So I got to really be careful before I start, because I'm starting to paint a picture, and I got to stop. I got to take the paintbrush out of my hand in my mind, because I got to put a stop to because something, because this can get me into some trouble. Yeah. So, so something's up right now. You're a liar, and, and, and the, the, whoever's talking to you, to me, hey, something's up here, you know, and, and, and maybe, and maybe, maybe, maybe this name is being brought up, not for me to assume but maybe God is entrusting me that maybe they haven't done anything wrong but they're just going through something and need some prayer and even if they were going through something instead of assuming the worst how about so what do we do pastor you say don't do it don't do it if you're gonna assume assume the best I said assume the best assume the best assume Assume the solution. Assume faith. Assume victory. Assume building up. Assume not tearing down. If it's negative, if it's taking away, if it's bringing division, wait a second. You got to put us, and maybe there is a little bit of accuracy sometimes, but you know what? That's when we drop to our knees and call upon the name of the Lord that God will help that brother, that God will help that sister, that God will help that person. Amen. Because the laborers are few and the harvest is plentiful. We need each other. Yes. Shout yes. yes. So if you're going to assume and start painting a picture, let it be from God's point of view. Let it be one of life, of victory, where God sees people. Because the majority of the time, and I know you are with me on this, the majority of the time, when we assume, we find out later that what we assumed was not right. And you lose relationships, you lose blessings, you, because two is better than one. Now you have cut yourself off, you have put a door up, you have locked that door, so now you can't, you're not receiving a word, you're not, and that person carries a blessing And how many people realize this? The enemy is always trying, as a byproduct of us opening up the door with this, with assumption or assuming something as truth when it's not truth, as fact. We open up the door for him to come in and take us, as I said again, 
in the spirit out of the carpool lane and we're stuck in traffic because we don't qualify for the carpool because where there's unity there is power for it's not by might nor by power but it's by my spirit says the lord and the enemy is always trying to get us out of the carpool lane because when it's rush hour you can't qualify for the carpool lane unless you have somebody else in your car but if you're assuming the worst about that person and you're painting a picture without even knowing the whole story and let me tell you there's always two sides to the story my brothers and my sister well they said this did you ever think there's another side to that story I don't understand it. Well, it's not your business to understand some things. Woo! <laughs> now I'm getting into this. Did, when did God hire you in some situations? When did God hire you to get into that person's business? How about taking care of your business first? Because your business is out of order a little bit. So we can't get in the carpool lane because now we've painted a picture. We have assumed something as truth when it's not true. And now relationships are broken. So now you're by yourself. You're in the carpool lane in the spirit. You can't go in the carpool lane. Even if you try to get there, you'll, you'll get caught. I said this last night when I was in the physical. I was in the carpool just not too long ago. And I was trying to get somewhere and I was caught up in traffic. I'm like, this is crazy. You know, Phoenix isn't what it used to be. I mean, it's just, you know, there's a lot of traffic now. It's like, it's like a big city. It wasn't like that before. And now you get on the freeway and it's during rush hour, man. It's crazy, amen. So I'm like, and I, was, and I, and I looked over at the carpool and I'm like, man, they're just kind of cruising along. And I'm like, you know, and that looks really, really good. And, and maybe I could just, just for 10 minutes, that's all I need is about 10 minutes. If I could just get it. Because if I stay here, it's going to take a lot longer than 10. If I could just 10 minutes, 10 minutes. And, and I, mean, I mean, there was a battle raging, amen. And as soon as I was about to go into that carpooling, as God is my witness, a police officer was driving right by here. And then it was one of these, okay, I get it, Lord, amen. Can't do it by yourself. I said you can't do it by yourself. There's no Lone Rangers in this thing. And when we assume relationships are hurt, broken, Churches are hurt, and disunity is brought, divisions are brought, and the majority of the time, the thing wasn't even accurate. And the person, in the end, that loses is the person that assumed. Because my Bible tells me that Joseph, even in prison, prospered. Because the person that's being, or we're thinking of, uh, and we have assumed something as being truth, the majority of the time it's so off, and if you do your homework later on, you'll see that person continually accelerate, continually increase, and the person that gets hurt, it's just like unforgiveness. The person that gets hurt with unforgiveness is not the person that, that hurts you, amen? It's the one that's holding the unforgiveness. The person that hurts us sometimes doesn't even know they hurt us, and they're just living their lives, Amen. And we're sitting at home letting bitterness grow and cancer and just it's like cancer within our, within ourselves and it's just spreading and we're fighting and we're having dreams of blowing up their cars and things like that. And one year goes by, two years go by, three years go by and you think that they're doing the same thing and they're not doing, they're just living their lives. They're just moving forward. They're just about, and most of them don't even know they've, sometimes, the majority of the time, the people that have hurt us, they don't even know they've hurt us. Look at your neighbor and say, just let it go. That was then, this is now. Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they. Woo! Joseph, his relationship, Potiphar, his relationship was damaged because he assumed something as truth when it wasn't truth and lost the blessing. So number one, we need to be careful because when we assume, we can't receive. And sometimes the person that we assumed something as being truth, and it's not, now we've closed the door from receiving a blessing, a word, and that word could be the word that takes you to the next level to give you your breakthrough. 
Number two, it brings division. And where there's division, there's no power. And when some things come up and are brought to our attention or they seem a certain way, don't assume the worst. Assume the best. Say, well, yeah, that doesn't look right. But you know what? Well, maybe, 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 well, maybe this is what's going on. And start to assume and start to paint the picture that's coming from heaven that's full of life and blessing. How many of us have been where you've left, uh, and I finished with this, and we're going to partake of communion, and I'm going to pick this back up next weekend. How many, are in, how many are enjoying this? It's good. It's care. This is, this is, this is. This. How many have been on the phone, or you've texted somebody, or you left a message with somebody, and I've thought about this, because I'm guilty of this a couple times, you know? Well, maybe more than a couple times. Only three times. You've left a message with somebody, and, 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 and a week has gone by, and two weeks have gone by, and as, as the time goes by, and it's like, you know, you're thinking to yourself, you know what? And, and then you're thinking, then your mind, your mind starts to, to paint the picture, and you start to uh, assume. <laughs> and, then, and you start to assume, like, well, you know, well, maybe I did something. Maybe they haven't called me back because I said something. And you start to think, and you start to lose all this time because your mind is racing. Can I get a witness? <laughs> think about the silliness, Amen. And we sit there and we're like, we're, we're, kind of, we're painting pictures of this and maybe I did this and maybe that's why they haven't called back. And, and then it goes from thinking we've done something wrong to, you know what, what's up with that? <laughs> then we start to get angry and we're thinking, oh, so that, you know, they, don't, they can't even take the time. And then we assume that, they're, you know, so we start to, all these things, we start to calculate all these things in our mind to the point where we get so upset that we stop talking to that person or we start to, it starts to affect our relationship when we see them later in the future because we're thinking wait a second you know I, I you know and it's three weeks later or four weeks later maybe it's a couple months later and you see that person but now you're not responding to that person this is a good relationship you had somebody somebody that you, you know that, that, that that's been a blessing in your life but now because of one phone call that hasn't been returned and, and you assume something now you you didn't take the time to call back you know we don't because we're waiting for them to call us right no way that we're gonna call <laughs> And the next thing you know, a few months go by or three months go by or four months go by and then, and then or maybe sometimes it's a year that goes by and then you find out that, 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 that and here you are, you're mad, you, you, you're not communicating with this person, you're, 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 you've pulled back in that relationship because you assumed and you painted all these pictures in your mind as truth when it hasn't even been proven, you didn't even know what was going on, what the whole story was and you find out that person was going through something, that person had lost a loved one, that person... And it's like five or six months later, and then you find out, and then you're broken, and you feel so bad because you start to realize, and then and and, and, and you realize, and, and if you ask that person why they didn't, they didn't even rec they didn't even realize you had even called during that time, and not just you, but everybody else on the list because their minds were was, was somewhere else. And it wasn't about you. It wasn't because they were angry. It wasn't because you said something. See, when we assume it takes us places, it's not good. And it affects our future. Instead of assuming, saying, you know what? They didn't call, so maybe, maybe because they haven't called and some time goes by, I'll call again. And if they don't get back to me, maybe I need to drop to my knees because maybe they're going through something. Maybe they're going through a trial. Maybe they're, they're fighting something. Who knows what's going on? I need, and God has given me the opportunity because I keep on thinking about this person. So let me drop to my knees and intercede for them. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. look at your neighbor and say, don't do it. If we can have the worship team come forward at this time as we prepare our hearts for communion. Amen. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. 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 Yeah, before you get on that plane, make sure that's the pilot. The real pilot. That's got his license. That's been doing it for a while. Yeah. I shared this story last night also as we prepare for communion. You know, I mean, this was back when I was in high school. I shared this story. 
and I, and I, you know, we had, you know, our youth group. It was like a group that we had back at the at the Greek church that where I was at, and 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 it was just. You know, we'd all get together on Sundays. And anyway, so there's always like a little group click, whatever you want to call it, you know, of kids and stuff like that. And there's one that was part, you know, that I was connected to. And this one person that was involved with us. And, and all of a sudden, this person started to treat me differently. You know, wasn't treating me, wasn't speaking to me the way we used to speak. And I didn't really think about it much. And then, then after some time, I was like, man, what's wrong with them? They'd walk by and I'm like, hey, you know, and I was like, you know, and they just kind of keep on. And, and this didn't happen for one month, two months, three months. It went on for almost two years. And I, I, and here's my, I never took the time to say, hey, what's going on? I just assumed something, maybe I did, I was thinking, you know, all these things in my mind, long story short, they assumed that I said something or did something because somebody said something and it wasn't even in the neighborhood. I wasn't involved in that situation, whatever, I can't even remember what it was. Two years later, that person comes up to me and says, I need to apologize to you. I go, for what? Because... I've been mad at you because I thought you said this or did this, but now I found out that that wasn't you. So two years went by because you went off of somebody else and what they said without taking the time, Potiphar, to get the surveillance tape and check it out before you stop talking to the person for two years? Or better yet, let it go. And do what Jesus would do. The merciful shall be shown mercy. Even if there is a little bit of truth to some stuff. How about forgiving? How about praying? Hey, love covers a multitude of sins. That just squashes it all. If we're going to assume, assume good. Assume great. Because if not, we get ourselves into places. And our futures are taken away. Blessings are taken away. Suddenlies are taken away. And it's five years later and we realize, wow, I was all. As we worship the Lord right now, the Bible says examine our heart when we partake of communion. Before we partake. If there's anything that's not, it's in your heart that's not right. Maybe this message, you need to repent. That's between you and God. But the Bible says before we partake, we, not, we need to make sure our heart is right with the Lord. If you're here for the first time, maybe you've never given your heart to Jesus. The only qualification to take communion is, the Bible says, we do this in remembrance of him. So to remember someone, you need to know him. So you're going to be given that opportunity to say yes to him and to receive him as Lord and Savior of your life before you partake. So for the next few minutes, just spend a few minutes right now between you and God. Make sure your heart is where it needs to be as we prepare our hearts in thanksgiving for what Jesus did for us. Amen? Yeah. 
to Jesus to somebody in this room but I want to insert this because somebody might just need this to before they partake I am amazed grieved frustrated sometimes at the insanity of the things that come back to us through email sometimes and people asking questions or saying I'm leaving the church because they form an opinion from something that somebody said as a self-appointed prophet parking lot prophet <laughs> some of you just got it amen and some have been here for a year or two or three and some have left and are not here anymore because they painted in a picture from what they heard from somebody else that stole wet behind their ears let me just fix this I need to insert this as I did last night because it's crazy and then and we try to respond as gracious as we can sometimes I don't even respond I said forget it that's not even worth responding to that's just you know what if they just need to go because if they've been here for so long 
and they have seen the fruit in the heart of this ministry for that long where in the world do you get that thought in your mind concerning that matter for us to even be thinking that way or that we believe a certain way well we heard that you guys don't believe in this and you believe in it how about going on our webpage and look at what we believe in for <laughs> Well, can you explain? I need, I need you to explain what you're all about. No, go to the web page. It's right there. Amen. I say that because please don't let somebody plant the seed and take you out of your place of blessing. Potiphar, don't lose your blessing. the fruit you shall know them and most of the time I want to add if you do your investigation just look at the track record it speaks for itself and then when you look at where the information is coming from that speaks for itself but at the same time what I'm trying to say is sometimes you don't even need to investigate just let it go and just keep on your just keep doing what God's called you to do keep coming to church keep being an example for God keep being a witness for God and be about God's business and if you do do anything, get on your knees and just pray. Am I preaching it right? Every head bowed. If you're in this place right now and you've never given your heart to Jesus, today's your day. God loves you. He's not intimidated with your sins, but he died for every one of your sins on the cross. The Bible says those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's not the way you start. It's the way you finish. Someone might say, it's too late. I've messed up. There's no way. I'm here to tell you as God's ambassador, as God's messenger, as God's voice here this morning, that there is hope. You are alive. There is time. You are here. You are listening to this word, which means there's time to get up and move forward and be the champion that God's called you to be. Not just to get your passport to heaven, which is the most important thing, but also for God to use you on this earth for his glory. If that's you in this room, say, Pastor, that's me. I want to get right with God. I don't want to live the way I've been living. I'm tired of being tired. I want to be a, the man of God that God's called me to be. I want to be the woman of God that God's called me to be. I want to get connected to the things of God. I want to live for God. I want to be part of the army of God. I want to finish strong, and I need to get right with God. Please pray for me. If that's you on the count of three, let me see your hand. One, two, three. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I see a couple of hands in the back. Thank you. I see a couple in the middle right there. Thank you. I see another one there. Thank you. I see him. I see him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see another hand. Thank you, sister. Praise the Lord. I see that. Thank you. I see that in the back. Thank you. I see those two hands in the back. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see in the back. What I want you to do right now is every hand that went up because we're going to partake. There's no room here at these altars this morning. But what we're going to do today is we're going to pray for you right where you're at. We're all going to pray together. But I want you, your altar is your seat. And I'm going to have you step up. Stand up. That's as your step of faith. Every hand that went up, stand on your feet quickly. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is your day. This is your day. This is your day. Thank you. Thank you. After service, if you need Bibles, we have Bibles for you. We also have a little pamphlet to help you with your start with your walk with the Lord. Another thing is next Thursday, this coming up Thursday, we have a class. New, be new believers and get connected. If you want to, uh, 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 if you're starting your journey with the Lord, also, uh, 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 if you want to get um, connected to the church and get involved in the church, this coming up Thursday, 7 o'clock. This th Is it this Thursday? No, next Thursday. Never mind. Not this Thursday. Next Thursday. Sorry. Next thir Not this Thursday, next Thursday. You can get that information in the bulletin out in the hallway. But the miracle starts by this prayer right now, saying this prayer. Amen. But if you need a Bible right after service, we'll have people here at this altar to help you with that, okay? I want the whole church to pray with these right now, amen? It's between you and God. If you pray with all your heart, God will come into your heart, God will forgive you, and your miracle starts today, amen? Are you ready to pray? All right, let's all pray this together. Dear God, I come to you today, and I call upon your name. I need you. I can't do this without you. Jesus, I ask you, to come into my heart and be Lord and Savior of my life. Take control of my life and use me for your glory. From this day forth, your will to be done and your name to be glorified. I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe that you are the son of the living God. I believe that you rose from the grave. 
And I ask you to wash me with your blood and renew a right spirit within me. Forgive me of all my sins. I'm all yours. And I call upon your name. And I believe this day, because your word says it, that I am saved, I'm on my way to heaven, and my best days are ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now, for some of us in this room, you might say, usually, you're like, you know, why isn't anybody applauding? Because I remember that one time, I, got, I told you this before, I was so mad one time. Godly mad, mad godly anger, amen. Not, you know, righteous anger. And I'm like, people just, God, they just prayed the prayer. We need to be. And I'm like, why is it, you know, it's like, come on, you know. I'm like, just, they just prayed a sinner's prayer. And then everyone's looking at me, you know, and I'm like, you know, why? And, and they're like, Pastor, we're, we're holding, we don't have any hands to, to clap. I'm like, oh. Got to be careful. Don't assume. <laughs> Let's just worship the Lord for a few more minutes and then we're going to partake. What a savior. You are our God. What a savior. What a God. We love you. We love you, Lord. We worship you. You are our God. Once again, for the cross, thank you, Jesus, for your mercy, for your grace, for your precious blood, for all that you did for us, that we might have life and life more abundant. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for your word. Thank you. And we believe that this is going to be the greatest year ever for us. Because we know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We bless your name. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake. Thank you. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus, we love you and we thank you. Let's partake. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this glorious day. For this truly is the day that you have made and we are rejoicing in it. Bless your people this day as they go home, Lord. 
bless their families, bless their house. And when they wake up tomorrow morning, Lord God, I pray, Lord, everything they do, everything they touch, favor, favor. I decree it. I declare it right now in the name of Jesus over your people, Lord God. Increased favor, increased influence, new doors of opportunity to open up for your people. I pray as the week starts, I decree it. I declare it that your name will be lifted up, Lord. Doors to open up that no man can shut, that only you can open up. I speak that forth over your people right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we give you all the glory and all the honor. As we just continue to worship the Lord at this time, we're going to sing this song. And as we sing this song, you're dismissed. God bless you. Amen. It washes white as snow. All the blood of Jesus. All the blood. Washes white